Steve, I'm from a company called Systems and Network Training. I do do training now and then, uh, less so these days, but um, what I'm here to talk about is the Lynx Accredited Training Program. I think a lot of you know about it already, but some of you are new, so here we go. It involves three separate courses, each one's a week long. Uh, sounds like a long time, three weeks, but actually it's a very, very short time to cover everything that a lot of you guys know. Uh, the key thing about the training programs is it is hands-on training, so there's lots of hands-on. Uh, interestingly, uh, we're moving away from real kit. Um, so real kit is being used for the beginner courses, uh, Lynx 1. Uh, Lynx 2 is in a state of flux at the moment, and we're offering students the chance to work with real kit or with GNS3. Uh, and interestingly, the last one that ran, ran with real kit. That's what they preferred. Um, and Lynx Week 3 has now moved over to GNS3. That, that introduces some interesting things in terms of the amount of kit per student, etc., etc., and the amount of time the instructor has troubleshooting. Uh, the other key thing is, uh, although it's hands-on training, we don't uh, do product training as such. What we're focused on more is the RFCs. So um, that's what we're covering with the Lynx Accredited Training Program. So there's three separate weeks. Uh, the first week is Lynx Week 1, or Lynx Accredited Internet Technician, which is a mouthful uh, one. And what do we cover on that? Well, the key areas, actually, is not just IP, but we actually cover TCP and IP. Uh, we don't do cables. So if I go back to 2001, which is when the training first started, we did do cabling to some degree, but the trouble is when you've only got five days, what do you actually concentrate on? Um, we do less cabling, uh, less on the network cars and focus, pu uh, not purely, but a lot on IP and TCP. Uh, we also concentrate on the different applications. Um, uh, what we've got here is IP, so we are obviously work with routers, so in the first week of training we do look at routing, but also we do look at the end systems. So. Uh, to do with TCP, it's end-to-end, -end, uh, hence the slide showing that particular part, uh, and we do look at TCP. Obviously, there's a whole lot of other protocols we do cover, so we do cover ARC, we cover ICMP, we cover UDP, etc., etc. Uh, we also cover applications, but that's not the core flow of the course. The course is more structured about the network software, uh, but applications, uh, obviously web traffic, uh, voice traffic, and video traffic. It. We look at all of that. Uh, key thing is the icon at the top, which is Wireshark. Uh, so Wireshark's used throughout to analyse the headers. We don't just talk about it. Um, there's RFCs at the bottom. I'm sure you all know them. In fact, there's one you may not know, uh, which isn't actually covered in the course. Uh, I'll leave that for homework, or you can ask questions at the end as to which one's not covered. Yeah. Anyway, right, uh, as an example of what we're covering in Lynx 1, uh, this is an example slide. Um, so the basic idea is we start from the beginning, uh, although um, I think just about everyone on the Lynx Week 1 course will have come across ping, uh, but the basic idea is we do cover ping among lots and lots of other troubleshooting tools like NSLOOKUP, TRACERUTE, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the basic idea is one of the things we want students to be able to do is troubleshoot networks, to a basic degree and here's a slide talking about troubleshooting which is if ping works where's the issue uh, if the network's broken or if ping doesn't work where's the issue um, so ping works at layer 3 and that's an example slide um, interestingly some of you are more advanced than others so you'll already be thinking ah oh, but there's always exceptions to this so you may be thinking about firewalls etc etc but that would all be discussed in the course yep and that's an example slide yep uh, by the way, there will be questions on all this later. Whether I pick on you individually, I'm not sure yet. But anyway, keep them going. Links week two. Uh, that's the second week of training. Uh, by this stage, what we're focused on is routing. So links week two is purely, not purely on routing, but mainly focused on routing, routing, and more routing. Again, what we're looking at is not specific product training. The idea is we want to concentrate more on how the protocols work uh, and example protocols 
controls are OSPF and ISIS. Uh, we also cover VRP. Uh, again, don't, uh, this is not an example slide, it's just different things taken from the course. So VRRP is not a routing protocol, but it is something that's covered in the course. Uh, there's a routing table at the bottom there. Uh, we cover routing tables. So again, you've got to imagine if you were beginning from scratch, what sort of things do you need to be covered? And the idea is you should be able to read a routing table by the end of the course. Yeah, okay. uh, and there's an example routing table that would go be gone through. Subnetting is covered in links week one, but mainly to the byte level. Uh, by the end of this course, you should be working to the bit level uh, within seconds is basically what we want you to be able to do. Uh, out of those RFCs, I don't know whether many of yeah, lots of you must read RFCs. RFC 7142 is quite a nice RFC, uh, given how short it is. And basically it says there shouldn't be an RFC for ISIS, which is the sort of RFC I like reading. Um, here's an example slide. So I showed you an example slide from Links Week 1. Uh, as I said, all the courses are hands-on. So this slide is actually an example of a hands-on exercise. So uh, one of the things we cover in a lot of detail in Links Week 2, perhaps too much detail, but uh, we're always reviewing things, is actually OSPF. Uh, and this is an example of OSPF and inter-area working. Again, uh, the idea behind this is we have a maximum of eight delegates on a course, and the idea was that we could have two pods of four, uh, which works quite nicely with real kit. Each student gets a router. What we've now moved to is if you're using GNS3, you'll be configuring all four routers yourself, which leads to interesting things. Yeah. Uh, again, some of you that may be experienced, the interesting part of this slide is actually and it is very interesting, technically, is between router two and router four. Uh, so in the exercise, it's quite interesting that the basic idea is you should realize that the link between router two and router four shouldn't be there, and as long as that link's not there, it all works quite nicely, and you can see all the inter-area traffic goes via the backbone. The interesting thing is when you put the link between router two and router four, it shouldn't work. Uh, you get interesting results, depending on on the kit that you're using, uh, but to get it to work, you can use virtual links. So virtual links are then configured to get that link working later. Anyway, that's another example slide. Uh, I must keep track of time, because uh, like I say, there will be questions. Links week three, so the basic idea is links week one is all about IP networking and is a foundation. Links two is getting you used to routing uh, and routing protocols, what they do, reading routing tables, etc. Uh, links week three is all about peering, peering, and more peering. So basically, it's all about BGP. Uh, and this is just, uh, just showing that it's all about peering. Uh, here's an example slide. So again, um, all the slides are diagram. Almost all the slides are diagrams. We don't do bullet point text. Uh, the idea is there's courseware, and underneath the slides there'll be uh, text to describe them all. So this is a slide on uh, manipulating the way BGP can route traffic. So in this particular slide, what we're showing is the AS path prepend method, and this is where we're talking about it. Uh, and the traffic will actually be going, uh, it will be taking the top link, even though normally it would take the bottom link. And the reason is uh, AS4 is actually prepending with the AS path. Uh, so if you're new to all this and not technical, I haven't really got time to explain a whole lot of detail about it all, but uh, there you go. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's AS path prepend. It's one way to influence traffic flows through the internet. Yeah, okay, and that's one of the things we discuss in detail. Um, things continually change. It's quite interesting. So 2001, TCPIP was there. It's still there, and it's pretty much the same as it was. Uh, BGP, also pretty much the same as it was. A lot of the things are the same, but there's little changes here and there. So as an example of a recent update in Link Suite 3, we cover BGP. And one of the things that was introduced, oh, uh, I don't know, but I think around July time last year, was there was a new RFC on large communities. So communities always had a problem in that the name really only allowed for a 16-bit AS number. 32-bit AS numbers came in 
oh, uh, a long, long time ago, but large communities have only just arrived and they allow you to have a community name that is actually uh, longer than 16 bits. It allows for a 32-bit name. It also has some nice other features, which we talk about, and that's just an example of an update. Uh, another example update is RFC 8212, uh, which is from, oh, that's from July 2017. So again, from last year, um, we haven't, uh, we talk about it, but we haven't really implemented it yet. But then uh, I'm not bang up to date with who is implementing it, who isn't implementing it yet. Uh, what's it all to do with? Uh, I like BGP in terms of when you uh, set it up out of the box and it's one of the first BGP exercise we do, just two routers back to back, you've got to start somewhere is you set up BGP and it all works, everyone tells everyone about everything. Uh, RFC 8212 uh, changes that uh, when it's implemented and the basic idea is when you peer with your BGP neighbour, rather than working nothing works, yeah, okay uh, which is actually pretty neat uh, because troubleshooting's got to work straight away and the basic idea is you have to explicitly uh, specify policy uh, for which routes you want to propagate or not. So that's another example update and when things like this came along it can have a big knock-on effect on all the exercises because at the moment a lot of the policy is covered later in the course um, after covering things like BGP with Wireshark etc etc. Uh, but those are the sort of changes that are actually happening. Right, there's exams. As I keep saying, there will be a test and whatever. Uh, oh, that's a good sign as well. <laughs> um, so uh, we've also got the exams. Uh, so at the end of each course, there's a certification if you pass the exam. Uh, the exams are interesting in terms of uh, they are not computer-based currently. That may change, but there is an issue. Uh, but I'll come back to that. So the exams are multiple choice. Uh, that does mean if there were two possible answers, Answers for each one you get 50% normally, uh, but there's more than two, often there's four, five, six different options, but it's still multiple choice. Uh, but there are two main types of question. Circle the best answer, uh, which is obviously you only meant a circle one, which is fair enough. But the tricky one, uh, which a lot of people don't like, but it does mean that you don't guess so easily anymore, is circle that apply. Now, circle that order apply means that there's more than one answer, so you know there's got to be at least two, but there may be 12 different choices. Now, what that means is if you tick five, but we wanted six, tough luck, you get zero marks. Uh, there's no half marks or anything like that. If we wanted five, you tick six, tough luck again. Yeah, okay. What that does mean is quite often people that sort of know what they're doing will know five and then the sixth one they're not sure about and they could take a 50-50 guess. Uh, but if you're saying we only want five, then that 50-50 guess has become 100%, I guess. But anyway, um, that's the two types of question. Now, what you'll find is um, exams are quite contentious, uh, as some of you may know. Uh, so written comments are considered by technical people. So if you feel the question is ambiguous, you can write comments, and those comments are considered, which is um, well, unique, I think, in terms of it is considered in the marking of the exam. Yeah, okay. Uh, the links one exam is 40 questions, links two and three are 60 questions each. Uh, 120 minutes gives you about two minutes a question, uh, whereas links one is about a minute and a bit for each question.